Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So in this video I'd like to show you the basic mechanics of the new dungeon, the Vault of Stars. So first things first, just a quick disclaimer. This dungeon is only just released on the public test server and things are still open to change. The mechanics I go through here are all of the basic mechanics and the most obvious ones which you'll need the basic understanding of to defeat its bosses and complete the dungeon. I'm sure there are a few subtle mechanics and tricks that I may have missed. Before the first boss you must just venture through the forest and then protect this mage who finds a way through the wards protecting the glooming court. You just have to kill multiple groups of mobs. If you see any flower corpses make sure to kill them first or they just keep spawning more and more mobs. So we have our first boss, the Royal Guardian. This boss summons a lot of mobs to help him, so make sure you have at least one DPS on a full AoE build. We went on with two DPS as AoE and the third a single target just following the boss. That was me on my rogue. So the main mechanics here are, when you see a small red circle on you, with a double arrow downwards, you must move this away from your battleground. So most preferably, move it away from the middle. When this circle procs, it will stun you for a split second, and then these purple glowing mushrooms shall appear where the circle was. This deals a lot of damage over time and slows you. Make sure to dodge away ASAP after the stun. When the boss becomes untargetable, he will teleport to the side of the arena and do one of the two mechanics. He will either call unbridled growth and a green line shall appear between the boss and one of the corpse flowers. You need to intercept this line so it does not buff up the flower. So stand between the boss and the targeted flower. Anyone can do this. If the green line hits the flower, it shall grow bigger, spawning more mobs and creating poisonous AoEs. If you succeed the mechanic, the boss will shout vermin, but if you fail, he will shout evolve and you shall see the corrupted soil bar go up by one. This bar will be under the minimap. Alternatively, the boss will attach a wide red line to a player and call out stubborn weeds. This red line must be positioned so that you have a flower positioned between you and the boss. That way the flower gets hit rather than you. It shall also reduce the size of a flower with that hit. If the player gets hit, you take a considerable amount of damage and the boss will shout evolve. Basically you failed the mechanic and the corrupted soil bar shall go up by one. If you succeed, again he'll just call vermin. Sometimes a mob shall spawn, a volatile corpse, and it shall attach a player with a red line and slow them. If that corpse reaches the player, it explodes and increases the corrupted soil bar. You need to kill that corpse before it reaches the attached player. Each corrupted soil stack shall increase enemy damage and enemy damage resistance. So you need to prevent this from happening by successfully completing the mechanics. After 50% of the gardener's HP, a displacer beast shall spawn and the boss will become untargetable. The main mechanic here is that the beast shall jump and stun someone. This someone will be someone entirely at random. And then you shall see the boss shall spawn on the outside of the arena and attaches a dark red line to that stunned person. The tank needs to get in between the stunned person and the boss, blocking that line damage. This deals heavy AoE damage, so it needs to be handled by the tank, and the tank should not stand next to the others. And thus it's best just to get closer to the Royal Guardian on the outside to tank the line and not kill the others. Basically, if you fail to tank the line, then anybody who's beside the Displacer Beast will take heavy, heavy damage and most likely die because it's about like 2 million damage. Also, while you are stunned, you'll take damage over time, so make sure the healer's on the ball to keep that person healed. After killing the Displacer Beast, the Gardener boss shall come back, and he does the same mechanics again. But additionally, you shall sometimes see shambling mounds attached to the corpse flowers, and slowly moving closer to the flower. If you don't kill the shambling mounds before they reach the corpse flower, they become alive and start attacking everybody. They are pretty tanky with lots of hit points. Most importantly, you should focus on clearing the small mobs most of the time. At least one DPS should be at a full AoE build. And if you can't clear the mobs, 
they just become stronger and stronger and start killing everybody so that's basically the first boss it's pretty challenging with a whole variety of different mechanics make sure you're prepared before running into this dungeon or you'll just end up taking a lot of time so after the first boss you now have like an area where you have to travel through a dark forest here you just need to follow the light and stay within its lit up area outside of it you take lots of damage over time occasionally the light shall stop and these mobs shall appear and you just need to kill them and you just continue on for about five minutes through this forest killing mobs then we come to the second boss the prince of frost these mechanics are fairly straightforward the boss will have his main outwell attack on the aggravator and then he'll regularly create a red arc behind him the dps will have to move this arc can be two arcs with a small gap between when the boss gets to 75 percent and three arcs at 50 percent and up to four arcs at 25 percent you'll then have a damage share mechanic hypo for this you just stack together you'll get a large red telegraph for this make sure you're grouped up and not in the red during hypo if someone stays in the red area they get frozen frozen in ice so make sure you're not in the red and this ice again will have the exact same mechanic as we've seen before where after a period of time it'll just instantly kill the guy if it's not broken quickly enough if one person gets a large red circle with a double arrow downwards you need to run away from the others stay alone until it procs when the circle disappears the person gets frozen in ice well pretty much everybody within that red area gets frozen in the ice that's why you need to move it away the others need to save him then by breaking the ice quickly. If this one person with the single circle goes and stacks on top of the other ones, everyone gets frozen in the ice and it'll be a wipe. Then if you see that everyone gets a circle with no arrow, you need to spread apart. When everybody gets the circle at the same time, it doesn't freeze anyone, but it will create a damage over time area on the ground. So as soon as this procs, you need to dodge away so that you don't die within that area don't stack them up but you can overlap them just a little bit so that you don't cover the entire arena with those damage aoe's if the boss is doing a red arc area attack and you also have hypo at the same time make sure that you don't take the hypo damage while standing in the red arc area it will freeze everybody within a certain area of that person and it'll pretty much end up in a wipe then Either you go behind the boss and stack there or between the red areas in a safe place. So this is basically the second boss. Also after 25% hit points, the boss will start doing mechanics faster. So it's like a soft DPS check. Then after the second boss, we'll have the maze. Here you must navigate to three open arenas and kill all the mobs there and then proceed to the next. While in the arenas, after a period of time of killing the mobs, the corpse flowers will spawn on the outer edge. Again, you must kill them ASAP so they don't just keep spawning mobs. You shall see a bar under the minimap called Encroaching Darkness, and when this empties, you shall fail the maze and get reset to the start of it. So you must quickly clear the arenas, navigate to the next, and in the third arena, you will get these void pools spawning on the ground. Just make sure to avoid them. After clearing the third final arena, you must kill these three shambling mounds before the steps and then run up the steps as quickly as possible and interact with the light and then you've successfully completed the maze and you're before the third boss. So the third boss, the Queen's Guard. Here you'll just have to defeat three golems one by one. The first and the second are pretty identical in mechanics wise. When you start the fight, you will notice light areas and dark areas in the arena. These areas will keep moving about. When the golem spawns in, the tank needs to pull him into a light area and only then should the DPS start hitting the boss. When the boss says, preserved by darkness, you'll need to make sure he is in a light zone to damage him. When the boss says, sheltered in starlight, you'll need to move him into the void areas to damage him. While standing in a void area, you shall take damage over time. So it's better to be a ranged DPS, but it's still doable on melee character if you have a decent healer. Whenever you hit the boss while he's not in his specific area, 
you will take damage and you'll deal no damage to the boss. If you have a bleed effect like Bilethorn on the boss and he changes from wanting to be in light to dark, you'll start taking lots of damage until he's in that Pacific area. Make sure you have a very good healer or try not using any bleed damage. Good luck rogues and warlocks. However, it's still doable. I managed on my rogue, but not without dying a good few times. Additionally, you shall also have a similar hypo mechanic where you need to group up and share the damage. When you fight the final third golem, he will spawn these black holes, which shall suck you towards them. It makes it very hard to position the boss since the tank can barely move while under the effect of a black hole, and the closer you are to the black hole, the more damage over time you take. So watch out. DPS will have it much easier with their dodge abilities to move away quickly. And that's that. We beat it on our first try, but after three hours and multiple attempts on each boss. It's a very fun dungeon, but if it doesn't have good rewards, it won't be repeated much at all, much like Castle of Ravenloft. And it's sad for this amazing artwork to go to waste like that. I wish they would just give us some decent rewards which we could farm over and over. But that aside, hopefully I've presented this well and if I did, consider leaving the video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.